Keep walking backwards, see what happens. Just keep going. Just, yeah. just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, folks. Welcome, welcome to, to Diversion Camp. Welcome Today, to our we're doing Playhouse. A Harbor Freight to Overland Trailer Conversion. Let's get started. Let's get started. My concept is to build an overland trailer with a Unistra exoskeleton that would provide unlimited mounting options for gear and fenders. Picked up this trailer yesterday for 400 bucks, zero rust on it. So we're gonna take this top off, weld up the frame, make it stiff, then put a big box on it. The idea was sparked while I was on a road trip and thinking about how it's a bummer that most overland trailers have fixed fenders that lock you into a tire size that's probably smaller than what you run on your rig. I'm a big fan of Unistrut so when the thought crossed my head to mount the fenders to strut channel so you can adjust up and down for tire size, I had a revelation about building the entire trailer out of Unistrut. I'm a DIYer and enjoy being able to mount my gear anywhere and I haven't seen a trailer on the market that allows for such freedom. This was right around the time it hit me. Using the Harbor Freight trailer as a platform to build on is far more work than starting from scratch. I have two main reasons for feeling this way. Number one, the red powder coat is thick and takes more time than you would think to clean and prep for welding. Number two, and more importantly, is the crap steel. The cross members don't fit tightly together and the steel requires reinforcement all over to ensure strength and longevity. Starting from scratch with better steel that's square or rectangular tubing would have taken a fraction of the time to cut and weld. Due to the steel being so thin and crappy, it warped and bent everywhere I welded it. I may have been welding a little hot, but I didn't expect it to warp as much as it did. I clamped some scrap steel to the frame to help keep things straight as I worked and that mostly did a good job. I wish I had started from scratch, but I'm someone who's always up for a challenge. If you're welding near any paint or anything that's coated with zinc galvanized, please wear a mask. Uh, I always wear a mask unless I'm outside and now it's only a couple tack welds on clean steel. I just, just want everyone to stay healthy and safe. Here I'm using the jacks and a level to prep for welding the two halves of the frame together. After getting to know this steel, I knew I needed reinforcements for the suspension. So I used 2x1 scraps to spread out the load from the leaf spring hangers across the frame. This worked great and I feel much better about pulling this thing down the freeway and off road, knowing that this is a lot stronger than if I had welded the hangers directly to the frame. The leaf spring hangers are the kind of thing you want to measure 10 times before welding. It's crucial that these are straight and properly spaced. I bought this axle and suspension kit from southwestwheel.com. There you can choose exact axle size, spring rate, bolt pattern, everything you need to dial your order in to work with what you're building. And it also has diagrams telling you exactly where to uh, mount the hangers or how far to mount them apart from each other to make sure they're in the right place. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, just had a great shopping experience. I installed all the suspension, mocked it up, knowing that it would be important for checking clearances with the wheels on as I continue the project. Before installing the axle, I gotta put the hub on cause I don't want weld spatter and grinder dust getting all over the spindles. It's bad to mix grease, so clean off all the grease that came on the spindles before packing the bearings and installing the hubs. If you don't know how to put a hub together or how to pack bearings, let me know in the comments below so I can plan a how-to video on that if needed. There's still a long way to go, but getting the wheels mounted to the frame already felt like a big accomplishment for me. I'm not a professional, so I learn as I go and every small accomplishment is a big one. Again, the combination of too much heat, long welds, and crap steel warped the frame. My fix was to clamp long heavy steel tubes to the frame and weld on some quarter inch plate to both reinforce the frame and maintain the straight shape. I cut the plate using a $14 metal cut blade that I got on Amazon for the skill saw. 
With the frame reinforced, it's time to start the walls. I'm using 14 gauge super strut from Home Depot. Because I bought an absurd number of sticks, I was able to take advantage of the bulk discount, so that was nice. If I were to do this over, I would consider using the 12 gauge strut channel to prevent some of the warping that happens later on. And if I were to build more of these trailers, I would source bare steel strut channel because the zinc coating is a real pain to work with between grinding and the dangerous fumes, it's not something I enjoy welding. To put the wall up straight and square with the frame, I'm using a combination of measuring, using a speed square, and using this super handy digital magnet level that I got on Amazon. The little level works for me by placing it on the frame, zero it out, then put it on the side of the strut channel and adjust the strut until the little unit says 90 degrees, which is 90 degrees relative to the frame where we zeroed it out. It's a super handy little device. Building the walls was another big learning lesson. Next time I would probably consider a fully assembling each wall and welding it with a sheet and all before welding to the trailer frame. Doing that would have greatly reduced time later in the build and I'll address that later in the video. I used angle iron to connect the two walls horizontally. Next time I would use square or rectangular tubing to avoid fitment struggles I ran into later and it would also be a stronger brace. For the tongue, I used 3 8 wall square tubing. I miscalculated the length and should have gotten a longer stick so it would run full length of the frame so I could add a hitch to the rear. I chose to leave the front of the tongue long because it was more important to me to have the ability to turn my truck 90 degrees to the trailer and not rub my bumper on the trailer. If the budget was not a concern, I would have gone back to the steel yard for another stick. Another plus one for the steel cut blade and the skill saw. I've done this cutting with an angle grinder before and it's much slower and more difficult to make it a straight cut. Here you can see me marking the steel sheet for the wall so I can cut around the angle iron. This is where I wish the sheet was on the wall before I put that angle iron on. Next time I'll do that and sandwich the sheet between the wall strut channel and the horizontal brace and just fry it all together with the welder. After another check and a couple adjustments, it finally went on with a perfect fit. Remember that working on a project outside without a cover, surface rust occurs fast in a humid climate. Covering bare steel with a tarp goes a long way in preventing this. Welding the left side of the trailer taught me a valuable lesson in sheet welding. I ran beads too long and too hot and it warped the sheet. On the right side, I did hundreds of spot welds to prevent warping the metal with too much heat. I was able to help straighten the warp sheet on the left side by clamping heavy gauge steel tubing to it before welding the non-structural in-between unistrut bars. Welding these in kept the sheet straight after removing the clamps. Fitting the floor was easy and I welded it down using angle iron and creative clamping. And again, lessons learned, I used spot welding on the floor to prevent warping. The rear door jam needs to be strong since it's a large opening without any shear strength provided by sheet metal, like on the sides. So I made it out of heavy C channel. The door itself is sheet bordered by angle iron with heavy hinges that I set up to have the door hinged downward, like a tailgate. I placed the front wall a couple of feet back from the front so I could have easy access outdoor storage. The access to this space is customizable since it is framed by Unistrut. The slide out was made using 12 gauge strut channel bolted to the floor as the slider channels. A sheet of plywood with two bars of 12 gauge strut channel for strength and eight strut channel rollers that are actually designed for hanging. They work just as well in this scenario and roll smooth and quiet after adding some grease. The slide out came out stronger than anticipated and I'm actually able to sit on the end of it while fully extended. The slider took some finesse, trimming and adjustment to get it to fit just right, but in the end it was perfect. The roof sheet was a perfect fit and didn't need any trimming before welding it down. Again, lots and lots of small welds to prevent warping. When you need it, don't be afraid to ask for help to stand on some metal to ensure proper tolerance before welding. I may or may not have burned my beloved shoe in the process. The vertical rack supports warped in the heat of welding, so I picked up a couple spreaders from Harbor Freight to fix 
the width of the rack before bolting down the crossbars. After test fitting the accessories like lights, license plate, and the axle, it was almost time to prep for the Raptor liner. But first, let's retrofit the old Harbor Freight trailer fenders. This was more of a joke, but hey, they keep it somewhat legal. This actually is what sparked the Unistra idea in the first place. With so many trailers limited tire size due to suspension and fender placement, I wanted to make a trailer that could fit any tire size and any accessory. Unistra is what made that possible. Before spraying the trailer, I had to clean up the nasty film leftover from burning the galvanized coating on the Unistrut. This is also why I wear a mask when welding, especially when welding coated metals. I used Rust-Oleum primer followed by a few coats of Raptor liner. The Raptor liner really is great stuff that lasts a long time when applied correctly and I was able to spray it using my small craftsman compressor that I got from Home Depot for 200 bucks. I picked up some generic weather stripping on Amazon that by the picture looked like it would do the job. I'm either a good judge or lucky because it fit perfectly. The water bottle test was near flawless. After letting the water sit, a couple drops did make it through, so I plan to sand the contact area smooth to create a better seal. The last steps are wiring and final install of the accessories, and this Harbor Freight to Overland Trailer conversion is done and ready for the trail. Don't let the time lapse fool you. This project took me about a month of persistent work and determination, even when tired before and after work. I learned a lot and had a lot of fun. Shortly after completion, we took this trailer on a 3,500 mile trip and it didn't skip a beat the whole time. It's lightweight and well balanced, so it towed easy and straight. It did bounce a little on some big bumps, so I may consider adding shocks, but it wasn't enough to cause any real concern. I hope this can provide some inspiration to tackle your own daunting project, and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of my projects. Special thank you to those who stayed till the end, and I'll see you on the next one. Come